nothing but a chem thing, baby. Too flipped out, teachers going crazy. Lancaster is a district that pays me. Unbreakable, so please don't try to break this. But uh, back to the lecture at hand. Accurate precision. You ready? Yeah, yeah! Let's do this. Concept one. Solutions are homogeneous mixtures which contain a solute dissolved in a solvent. Now the key takeaways here is the solute is always the substance in smaller quantity, where the solvent is always the substance in larger quantity. Now when you put the two together, you get a homogeneous mixture, which means it's evenly distributed throughout and you can typically see through it. Solutions key concept two. The amount of dissolved solute depends on the temperature pressure, and the chemical nature of the solute in solvent. When we increase the temperature on a solid solute, its solubility increases. However, if we increase the temperature on a gaseous solute, its solubility actually goes down. The gas has energy to leave the solution. Pressure only affects gaseous solutes, and when we increase the pressure, it's like we're pushing down. We're going to push that solute that's a gas into the solution, so its solubility goes up when the pressure goes up. And finally, different solutes will have varying degrees of solubility. Solutions Key Concept 3. The phrase likes dissolve likes helps predict whether substances will dissolve to form a solution. So ionic and polar solutes are soluble in polar solvents. They are insoluble in nonpolar solvents. Nonpolar solutes are soluble in nonpolar solvents, but they are insoluble in polar solvents. For example, oil and water don't mix. So since oil will not mix with water, and we know water is polar, we can deduce that the oil must be nonpolar. Solutions key concept four. Solubility tables in graphs, tables F and G, can be used to predict the solubility of substances and determine the saturation of solutions. Taking a look at table F, on the left hand side we have soluble substances, which means that they are aqueous. On the right hand side we see insoluble substances, which means they are solid. Looking at table G, we see the solubilities of different solutes as a function of temperature. Note that the solubility of these substances is measured in grams per 100 grams of water. If you find that the amount dissolved is on the line on table G, you have a saturated solution. If you are below the line, the solution is unsaturated, and above the line is supersaturated. Solutions key concept five. Solution concentration can be expressed in several ways, including molarity, percent by mass, percent by volume, and parts per million. Now on your reference tables, table T, you have a set of formulas to help you out. Molarity is always moles of solute divided by liters of solution. You may be given grams, so you may have to convert using the formula mass into moles. Always divide by liters of solution. In percent by mass, it is always part over whole for a percent. In the case of solutions, it's always the mass of the solute divided by the mass of the solution times 100. Parts per million is very similar to that calculation, where it's again the mass of the solute divided by the mass of the solution, but this time times a million. Solutions key concept six. Preparation of a solution is a process in which the desired amount of solute is added to enough solvent to obtain the desired total volume of the solution. Many students get confused and think that the total solution volume is the same as the amount of water they're supposed to add to make the solution. But the solute has volume of its own. When making a solution, you want to make sure that the solute is completely dissolved and that you've added enough water to reach the desired volume. Solutions Key Concept 7. 
The addition of a solute to a solvent causes the boiling point of the solvent to increase and the freezing point to decrease. This increase or decrease is accentuated by increasing the number of dissolved particles. Now this is the reason why the boiling point, if we put salt into water, goes up. We put salt on the roads in the winter time to lower the freezing point. Now for determining the number of particles in solution, it comes down to two factors. The first being the actual concentration of the substance, usually measured in molarity. And the second being the Van Hoff factor. Now for molecular or covalent substances, they only have a Van Hoff factor of one because they do not dissociate in water. Now ionic substances do dissociate. So for example, NaCl has a Van Hoff factor of two because you'll get an Na plus and a Cl minus. Now MgSO4 is also two because it's Mg plus two ions and the SO4 minus two polyatomic ion. MgCl2 has a Van Hoff factor of three because you'll get an Mg plus two and you'll get two Cl minus ions. Solutions key concept eight. The boiling point of a substance is the temperature at which the vapor pressure of the substance is equal to the atmospheric pressure. We can take a look at table H, which is the vapor pressures of four different liquids. We have propanone, ethanol, water, and ethanol acid. As temperature increases, we can see that the vapor pressures of all four of these liquids also increases. Now look at that dashed line. That dashed line represents standard pressure, 101.3 kPa. Wherever the curve crosses that dashed line represents the normal boiling point. We just have to look down to the x-axis and read that temperature. Notice that ethanoic acid has the highest normal boiling point, so therefore we can infer that it has the strongest intermolecular attraction. But we never off, or we zone to the break of dawn. S E I E N C E in the hall, they call S Wing. You know we never wear a tie, like my homies, boys, two men. It's so hard to say goodbye. Like, like this, that, and this, and uh, it's, it's like, like that, and like this, and like that, and uh, it's like this. You're going in low power mode. Plug in, chill to the next episode.